Hello and welcome back and today I want to show you guys the software overview and a little bit of a review of the TP-Link MR600. It was that mobile SIM router that I showed you guys just about a month ago and I've had it up and running for about a month. I've bought it for myself originally and I won't lie, I've not looked back. I really, really like this device and even though I actually generally use it connected into another switch network to add a bunch more ports for NASes for the videos. There's still no avoiding that for a budget solution, this has been really, really impressive. Um, what I'm going to show you today is a lot of the features and functionality that you get with the MR600 and basically the user interface and the stuff you can do. So once you log into the device and you set it up for the first time, you can access this TP cloud link if you want to access it anywhere in the world. But as you can see, I am using the local area network to connect to this. I'm directly connected to this device. I say directly, I am using a Wi-Fi connection down here. And I've also got other devices, as you can see, connected in its network environment. You can flick between basic and advanced mode. And in advanced mode, obviously, there are a great many more options and configuration choices for you. But straight away, even looking down, there's lots of information ready to go straight off the bat. So, for example, at the moment, it'll give you lots of information about the upload speed, the download speed, how much data I've accumulated. I've utilized just shy of 170 gigabytes in around about a month. Um, there's also information with regard to the SIM that you're, uh, that you're aligned with, and you can change things like roaming. There's even a separate area dedicated to your mobile SIM that lets you send text messages and more. But for the network map, what we're gonna do from this point onwards is, although you can go to the quick setup option to set this device up for the first time, something I'm not gonna do right now, but I might do a complete separate video in the future showing how to set the TP-Link MR600 up perfectly for the first time, I'm gonna go straight into the advanced options because this will give us everything that the basic mode gives us and more. Although we will lose a number of the configuration options as you can see on screen. So for example, the fact that you can gauge a speed test on your local area network is quite handy. Right now, there's some background operations with three NASs in this room that are downloading firmware updates um, in the background. So this is gonna make an impact on that speed test. But nevertheless, I'm gonna leave that speed test happening in the background because right now it's not gonna make a blind bit of difference because of all the uploads happening in the meantime. But you can go to historical data and see more information there that took place uh, a wee while ago back in early Feb. So carrying on, we can find out more information about our internet connection if we so choose. We can see more information about the router itself and what's connected. We can even look if there are mesh or satellite devices connected, something I haven't done. But we can also look at connected client devices on the local area network, such as NASs, which we can label or use their default labels. Along with that, you've even got information with regards to text messages that you've received on your SIM card that you've installed inside this device, which is quite handy for sending and receiving messages, even though this isn't technically a phone device. Um, also, there's the option further along for the internet connection, wireless connectivity, mesh connectivity, sub-guest networks, parental control, and that all-important internet connection where you can kind of connect to this router from outside your home or office environment. However, if we carry on, we can take a look at the rest of the options readily apparent. And I can definitely see that the upload and download happening in the background here is playing its part and affecting a few of the things we see on screen. In the advanced options, this is where pretty much all the information that those other tabs were presenting to us and more are made readily available. We can find out more information about individually connected devices as well as check on the performance and values of our subnetworks and different frequencies too. This is a dual frequency device, so we've got the sub network there of 2.4 gigahertz for my older legacy devices and the 5 gigahertz network for my high end laptop and one of my editing rigs. If we carry on moving forward, we can go to the operational mode choices where we can decide whether this device is going to be used as its own standalone router mode or if it's going to be utilizing the SIM card. At the moment, I've got it in SIM card mode, but you can switch it so that you take advantage of the WAN port on the rear of this router and not use 
the 4G SIM. Bear in mind that you can utilize both with a failover option that allows you to use a wired connection in your own office business environment and still have a SIM card in the background to pick up the slack in the event of failover. Moving forward, we can go into more technical aspects with regards to your network, everything from speeds to uh, information about your internet service providers, with the internet option here dedicated to lots of SIM information. You can make sure that you only use 4 or 3G networks. You can even um, turn on off or off everything from data roaming to using mobile data overall. There's lots of configuration options here. And once again, all of this can be done remotely and by creating multiple profiles, you can flick between different profiles on different days of the week and at different hours of the day, with a whole scheduling selection of options too. Moving on, you can find out more information about the device itself, setting up different lock codes, changing some of the internal date and time um, settings, as well as configuring the LAN options where you can assign priority to different devices on the device. So if you utilize one of the four IP LAN ports on this device, you can make sure that those devices have priority lower or higher down the chain or even bar connection of certain devices. Dynamic DNS allows us to create um, a dynamic DNS platform with which to activate or access the device remotely with the added benefit that this DNS can apply to other connected devices. Static routing allows us to make sure that certain devices are always going to be on a fixed place on the network and there's more technical information the further we, de we go down. There is an, an SMS series of options. And again, I know this is a tiny thing and something you don't really find much on routers, but I genuinely love it. I love the idea that even though I'm using a mobile SIM card, I am not restricted to the idea of who and what I can send messages to. I can receive messages and send messages and I take advantage of my SIM card to ensure that I can see everything that I need to do and send and, and, and back up the data from my SIM onto this device over the network along with SIM messages and more. Wireless connectivity moving forward is readily available and with wireless connections you can choose whether you want to create sub wireless networks and the security protocol that they have as long as you don't mind taking advantage of the fact that it is still going to be a 4G network and not taking advantage of more modern connections such as AX Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi 6. You can even change a lot of the settings on the fly, even with a live connection. WPS settings with a WPS button can still be done to make sure that things like printers and dumber devices that don't have a method of entering pin codes can still be accessed and tinkered with right here, and therefore generate a pin code that both devices can set by default as a two-stage security measure. The wireless schedule allows you to flick between some of those profiles we talked about earlier on, and a lot of that can be applied to whether you want wireless or just wired connectivity with loads of other more technical options readily available. If you have TP-Link mesh devices such as the Deco system, you can merge this TP-Link um, M600, MR600 into that mesh network quite easily. Although it doesn't work with existing mesh devices as I've tested this with the Synology MR2200AC and the Asus RT-AX92U. Create a sub-network so that friends or perhaps clients have their own internet connection, though they still can't connect to bigger devices on the main network here, and it's very easy to set up for the first time. Even that forwarding and uh, port changing and opening up ports or even changing it to a DMZ, demilitarized zone, are readily available here which again, given my previous experience of a mobile router, was the Netgear M1. This is an incredibly technical overview and lots to configure with. Loads of stuff to do here that just aren't available on other Wi-Fi enabled 4G routers, even mobile ones. Parental controls can be set and I'm not gonna play with those too much. And of course, you've got your quality of service options that allow um, different times of day and different connected devices to maintain priority with a huge database of devices and MAC addresses so you, as you so need. 
security protocol, everything with regards to Wi-Fi connections, DDoS protection, MAC address and IP address connection protection are all available here. There are loads of options open to you on this device. And again, I have to stress, this is a device that's designed for mobile broadband, a SIM card, and there's still loads of lovely options straight off the bat. Moving forward, you've got everything from setting up a third-party VPN on this device and making sure that your trans transmission of data packets, data packets is as safe as possible with a wide range of VPN service providers supported. Finally, the system tools allow us to change everything on a much easier and low level. You can change everything as low as even the LEDs on a time schedule or disabling them completely. On top of that, you can, evil, you can even take advantage of other settings with regards to the schedule and internal diagnostics right away from this option. Firmware updates are regularly accessible here and you can arrange for them to be automatic or manually set as you so choose. And with more network surveillance options available to you to monitor um, the connected devices on your network as well as analyze information with the traffic monitor area that allows you to see what data is being used by what device, where and when, there's loads of options currently available in the TP-Link MR, uh, MR600 that you should really be taking advantage of. This is more than just a mobile SIM route. So this device is providing a lot of bang for your buck, and I think it definitely rivals a number of high-end routers that rely on your internet service provider internet connection. And if you're using one of those rolling 30-day unlimited data SIMs, those all-you-can-eat all ones with three, this is very much going to be open to you. And given that there was lots of things I heard about the three network not being supported on this device in certain regions, I can confirm that I've had this device working both in central London and on the south coast of England, Germany and France. So, the, you know, there's a lot you can do with this device. Anyway, I'm going to wrap things up here. I will be doing a full setup overview of this device in the coming week. So do stay tuned for that. But if you are interested in learning more about this device, there is a full review on NAS Compares in a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And I'll see you next time.